Uh, good evening. My name is uh, William Harris, a.k.a. Truth Maze, and I am from the Twin Cities. I'm from North Minneapolis and South Minneapolis, uh, currently living in South Minneapolis um, in the Global Midtown area. Yep. So. This is my first time at this event. Um, yes. Um, I actually was in Frogtown earlier this year in the summer for yet another event. And then I also know a friend of ours named Dr. Joy. She had an event in her community, like kind of like a she, like a block party um, event. And so, and um, I have friends that stay in St. Paul. Yeah, and I'm here. Have you even worked in St. Paul before? <laughs> Uh, I think about community gardens. I think about uh, the education around food. As a matter of fact, a friend of mine by the name of Mark Hall, he works with young people at a community center here in St. Paul, uh, teaching them the, uh, the importance of understanding their food and knowing their food and putting their hands in their food. Uh, so big up to Mark Hall. Um, and um, I think about sustainability. I think about uh, broadening our ideal of food and uh, loving to grow it ourselves and, uh, and then eat it. <laughs> oh wow um oh that's a deep one um what's the connection between the food i eat community and culture well you know um just to be like really frank I, you know we come from a culture of, of of eating a lot of uh processed foods um but we also come from a culture of uh of growing up uh where the grandparents you know made us eat food that they cooked and, and real things that they baked and some of that has been lost and now we're returning back to it. When I think about um, culture, I think um, a lot of us um, would benefit by just learning and knowing more about the culture of food, the food culture itself, the food industry itself and looking into our own past um, to learn more about food and to share with other people that have knowledge about food and that um, helps shape new culture or adds on to what's already prevalent. Um, mm, let me see. To be honest, um, well, I mean, there's things that just don't grow here, but that's that's okay. There's things that just can't grow in this climate. But then, what we do have here is an abundance of. Uh, uh, I mean, during the different seasons, we have a lot of wonderful things that are are grown right here in in St. Paul, in Minneapolis. Um, I can say. Well, I'm, I'm really interested in jackfruit, but that's just way random. But jackfruit is really an interesting um, fruit that's, uh, yeah, it's really good. It's really good. And, and like, well, well, jackfruit jackfruit is kind of like, um, I'll say it, it, it's, it's a good meat source substitute that's actually, that's grown, um, that comes from a plant. Its source is, a, is an actual plant. Um, you can just look it up. Uh, I think Southeast Asia and a couple other places are where it actually grows in abundance. Um, it's not the most aromatically um, enjoyable smelling fruit, but it's it's um, it's rich in a lot of vitamin C and other minerals that I don't remember all right now. But the first time I had it was actually at the Bedlam Lower Town, St. Paul. What up? Um, and I had it in a I had it in a salad, and I swore it was meat. But they explained it was jackfruit, but I was just like, I don't know what that is, so let me get some. And I thought it was going to be a fruit, but actually it reminded, it's very, it has a very interesting texture that's close to, like, meat. Um, and so, um, those don't grow here, but we can find them in, uh, in uh, maybe like a store like Sun Foods, uh, or any of the Asian markets, or any, uh, any market, um, you know, that, that has, like, um, food that's brought in from outside. But, my point is, I digress. Um, still with that, um, I think it is taking advantage of the food that's homegrown, that's organic, and that's prepared with a lot of good intention and love. So, yeah. yeah. And then, um, where do your family go shopping for food? Do you go outside of your neighborhood? Or? Uh, we go to a couple of places. We go to, <laughs> we go to um, in my neighborhood, we go to the local um, market that's in Global Market that, 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 uh, offers locally grown produce. We also go to Holy Land because they have the most scrumptious uh, olive bar in the world. I'm just saying. Um, and then there's halal meat if we're looking for meat. And um, let me say, uh, I, we, we do go to Cub. Not as much. 
But you know what I'm saying? Um, we have a very eclectic diet, and there's a co-op, a couple of co-ops that we frequent, and we're part of a co-op. And another thing is I look for uh, um, people like Sisters Camelot or others that really like to just give away produce if you help harvest it or whatever. Uh, yeah, so, but we, we mainly... I mean, we, 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 if we're in St. Paul, we will go to the co-ops in St. Paul. Like we, and we've done that. We went to Mississippi Market. We went to you know, other places like that. Even the Asian markets ourselves, we go there to get a number of things that we can't find um, as readily in, like say, the larger grocery stores. So, um, yeah. <laughs> What's going on over there? <laughs> what are they about to eat? Okay. Uh, you just got here, right? Yeah, I just got here. Ooh. Yeah. Well, what I heard, what, what I heard just now was a beautiful story um, by some wonderful um, dancers. Uh, it, it was really wonderful because I know uh, they're also into hip hop culture. I seen that, and um, I believe that they represent the Hmong, and or should I say the broader Asian community, and not to marginalize or be politically incorrect. Um, but I recognize that, and the story was about family, and it was beautiful, and it was very interpretive. Um, and so, and also what I've heard tonight is that uh, people are trying to connect with each other. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.